Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, season three of Rumor Has It, and today we have our special guest, uh, newly promoted Battalion Chief Malcolm Robinson and Battalion Chief Lee Gregory. How's it going, guys? Going good. Going pretty well. Going good. Uh, I know you're excited to be here in the Chief's office and not be in trouble, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I just want to talk to y'all a little bit today about uh, being a first, something I know a little bit about. Uh, being a first, um, but you two are the first African Americans promoted to the rank of battalion chief, EMS battalion chief, uh, in the history of the Memphis Fire Department. So just a little bit, like, Lee, what's that mean to you? Oh, it means a lot. I mean, I didn't set out to make history, uh, but me and Malcolm uh, recognized this quite early on that we could possibly make history. We thought at this point that this would have, you know, happened before we got here, but uh, it was great to see that my fellow classmate, both of us walked through this door at the same time, so it feels good. Awesome, how about you, Malcolm? Yeah, I agree with uh, Chief Gregory. Uh, felt really good to walk through the doors together, uh, breaking down barriers and making history for the uh, Memphis Fire Department. And as he mentioned, it was never really a goal of mine to even become a chief. Uh, but the opportunity presented itself. Uh, we are following the shoulders of those who made the attempt uh, and uh, wasn't successful, but I'm pretty sure that they're root, uh, rooting us on and are excited to see this moment. Right, everybody's rooting you on because, uh, you know, when one of us succeeds, we all succeed. Absolutely. So uh, let's talk about a little bit. I just want to, I don't know if y'all seen this data. Uh, this is uh, in the United States. And you know we use a lot of data on the fire department to, to make decisions and, and help us keep our uh, keep informed. In the United States, just to give you an idea of the broad EMS picture, 94.7% um, of the paramedics in the United States are white. 3.4% of the paramedics in the United States are African American, and then you got a little less than two that are either mixed or, or other races. Um, that's pretty pretty crazy when you think about those numbers. Tennessee uh, is a little bit different uh, in the state of Tennessee, and these are, this is current data, 2024, I just pulled this data. 86% um, of the EMS, that's EMTs and paramedics, are white, 9.3% African American, and then 4.6% uh, mixed or other races. So, um, you know, this is, what we're doing here in Memphis is really changing the game for uh, young African Americans aspiring to look for different career choices. Uh, just to give you a little bit of mix of our overall mix on the, on the Memphis Fire Department, we're 52.8% white, 44.1% uh, African American, and then 3% uh, mixed or other. So uh, our diversity numbers are closer, a little closer to represent our community, which I think we all believe that's important. But just um, after you hear, what is, hearing those numbers, what does that mean to y'all? I, I think it, uh, it speaks to the fact that um, nationwide that we do need to increase the exposure of this profession to uh, communities that are uh, minority, uh, African-American communities and abroad, um, even here in the city of Memphis. And as you mentioned, our numbers are a little bit higher than the national average, and that's because we've implemented our own paramedic program in this community, uh, or the city of Memphis, which is about, I think currently 628,000 mm -hmm. people in total, with about 66% being African American. Uh, Lee and I both grew up in the Frazier area, uh, literally around the corner. My school used to beat his school up in basketball. Oh, okay. and I love right. uh, <laughs> but, uh, and we, we're about a greater part, and we, and I know myself coming on, I had no idea what an EMT or a paramedic was. I, I didn't even know that firefighters actually rode an ambulance. And so that was new to me, and I didn't discover that until I actually came on to the job that I had to become a paramedic uh, in order to maintain the job. And so it, 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 having that exposure in this community would likely increase the numbers uh, to some degree. Uh, and I think uh, 
Yeah. And I think, Lee, I think you have a similar story where you came on the fire department and didn't really realize the EMS component was such a big part of what we do. Oh, absolutely not. Uh, when I came on, I just saw a red fire truck. I thought it was just going to be a firefighter. And I was sitting in class one day and they said, you guys are going to be paramedics. I had no idea what that meant. Mm -hmm. um, but fast forward to where we are now, uh, I saw how important that was and how that putting that in our community is important. So I think we are at the forefront in Memphis of leading the charge of trying to change those statistics, um, especially in the state of Tennessee. Um, I think we're probably by far the largest uh, department that employs African Americans that are uh, firefighter paramedics. And then when you put that up against uh, national numbers, I think we are, you know, light years ahead of people. So. The model that we implemented some 17 years ago, we reaped the benefits of that and look where we are today. Uh, what Chief Robinson mentioned, you know, we thought we wouldn't be the first, but uh, we are and we're glad to walk in, through those doors and, and, you know, carry that torch yeah. and make this a normal thing. Yeah. And I can tell you, and I think I've talked to both of you, being first uh, is rewarding. It's a, a sense of pride, but it's also with that comes a lot of responsibility. And uh, I know we've talked a lot about mentoring uh, and being good role models uh, for the younger firefighters that are coming up. Maybe we have some, uh, some young Malcolms and Lees that just came on the department that didn't realize they were gonna have to become paramedics. So uh, what do you say to them? Well, I say to them that everybody, we all started on the same path, you know, of, of not really knowing which direction we're gonna go. But that journey, don't, don't get sidetracked by your journey. All of our journeys may be a little bit different, but the path is the same. You know, so stay focused. Uh, the old traditional way of hard work pays off, that's truly, the, that's, tr that's a true statement. Hard work does pay off. We got here by putting in the work. We didn't get here by chance. So if you do that, your journey will be fine and there'll be obstacles along the way, but be focused and, you know, latch on to anybody that you can that's gonna guide you to that point where you wanna go in your career. Absolutely. Uh, to piggyback off Chief Gregory, Gregory um, put the work in. Uh, as he mentioned, hard work pays off, and it, and it will continue to do so. Um, you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations, uh, situations where you're actually putting pressure on yourself. And pressure is going to do two things. It's either going to bust pipes or produce diamonds. So just continue to put the hard work in, continue to move forward, and it will, you will reap the benefits in the long run. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sitting here, both of y'all just said, uh, we talked about being at first, and there's a, uh, there's a newspaper article that's on my wall right there, and I don't, I don't, I don't know if we can uh, zoom in on it, maybe we can uh, get that, but it was in the Memphis Flower, and the, the big headline, it says, do the work. Absolutely. Do the work. Do Absolutely. The work. So I think maybe we're catching on to a mantra there, um, that if you want to make something, if you want to make a difference uh, on the Memphis Fire Department in our community, it's, it's, it, nothing's free, nothing's given to us, um, but the, the opportunities that we've had, the responsibility we have is great. And really you gotta do the work and you gotta be prepared and, uh, and show up when uh, citizens call for us. So um, I know both of you said you came on, wanted to be, that you thought you were gonna be a firefighter, but at some point your passion obviously shifted where, and, and that happens to all of us, we all have things, different things we're passionate about. But at some point, your, your passion changed, uh, focused more on EMS. So what, was there a turning point for either of you, or is it just, uh, just Well, I, I would say one, once we got out, flushed out, and got into the community and really got to see how firefighters were received and you engaged with the community, you, sh you saw that you being that person that responded to those people that looked like you really made a difference for them because it's, it's so many times that they didn't get that. And then when you got that community engagement, that one-on-one, -on -one, you realize that EMS, you're really helping people. Even, if, even when they're at their worst, you're really helping them out and trying to get them the, the best care that they can. And they, they receive that well. And I knew that if I continued on this path of being, you know, going to the highest level of being a paramedic, that it, it was going to be rewarding. And it has. It, it really has. Again, the, the fire department had implemented that paramedic program, and we were some of the first graduates uh, coming through that class. So, uh, in a sense, we were also a first then, and and th there were unique challenges in being that first class. Um, we were, you know, tr your traditional medics, kind of felt like 
these are individuals who are being medics because they have to and not because they want to. But you know, we would argue that a large population of us who did obtain that medic wanted to be so, and we've, we've held on to that badge with honor. Um, when I had the opportunity to see that, having a specific set of skills and knowledge would actually give me the capability and abilities to actually improve the life of these individuals who were calling us for their help, it, it was life changing. And it, it let me know that I had become more valuable not only to my community, but also to my household. Mm -hmm. And so the drawback on that is that all your family members are gonna start calling you because they think <laughs> that you're now the doctor. So <laughs> get a little headache and, you know, hey, what do I do for this? All right, just go, <laughs> go to your doctor, but. Man, it happens if you go on vacation, somebody bumps their head or something. I had somebody, I had an incident and I was just an EMT. Uh, not, you know, EMTs are important. EMTs Absolutely. are important, but I, I didn't, uh, I didn't have to become a paramedic. And so, like you said, my journey was different and that, and that's okay too. And, and like I said, it's, we all have different journeys and that's fine. But like you said, if you're out and, and you're the only EMT or paramedic and one of your family members are going to say, oh yeah, <laughs> he's a paramedic. <laughs> and then you got to jump into action. We've had a lot of people that have actually, uh, saved lives you know, on vacation and off, off duty as well. Because it becomes a natural thing. It's, yeah. it's something that you naturally just absorb. And like Malcolm said, people think because we had to, but we grew that passion because we saw that value in, in actually helping folks and what those outcomes would, would be. And those were people that looked like us, talked like us. So it, it definitely drove that point home. Uh, yeah, I know, uh, you know, we all came on as firefighters, uh, me as well. And, and you know that whole stereotype, like running into a burning building, saving, you know, a, ba a baby or a child or something, that heroic action. Uh, but what we know in reality, those uh, opportunities are are more rare than they are common. Um, but as a medic or an EMT or a medic, uh, saving someone's life is almost a routine daily thing. Oh, of. absolutely! It it puts you right on the front lines of some. Uh, opportunities that you didn't think and they, they're not always dramatic there are sometimes some of the most simplest things and just recognizing that this person is having a heart attack mm -hmm. and taking that chaotic situation and bringing calm to it and getting the right outcome is what we do all the time it's so routine that you don't even realize that you're truly are saving somebody's life what's that feel like when you get somebody's pulse back when they're when you oh. get there and they're not breathing they're not they're pulseless what does that feel like it, it's an amazing feeling. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, knowing that you have a, a set of knowledge, set of hands-on skills that can actually take a person who's no longer breathing, no longer conscious, uh, no longer has a heartbeat, you can implement a set of uh, uh, procedures and, and protocols with the help of some of your co-workers and actually get this person back up to the point where they're able to go to church Sunday and actually mm -hmm. uh, thank God and uh, thank God for EMS that they're actually at, you know, at church and um, can enjoy their time with their family and friends. So um, I, I, I highly value it. And, and many times you'll actually see some of us go even further. Even if we're not promoted, you may see those who have a strong passion for taking care of others further in education, uh, maybe going into nursing or becoming a PA or even a physician in some cases. So I, I, it's extremely beneficial right. and I enjoy Absolutely. it. So, um, so, you know, you came through the ranks, uh, went through the EMS ranks, both of you were lieutenant, EMS lieutenants, um, and, you know, it's like everything. As you get promoted, your uh, duties change. So now you're more into leadership roles, um, which is a little different. And I know you're, I know you're freshly promoted, so you hadn't really, uh, you hadn't had those, a lot of experiences like that, but how do you, um, kind of shift that mentality to being the hands-on uh, the hands-on person to being more the leadership person that helps that next generation of uh, EMTs and fire and paramedics um, be successful and represent the fire department the way we wanted to how, how is, how's that transition going and and how do you see yourself in that role uh, the transition is going pretty well uh, for myself when I got promoted I went out to EMS training and in that role, you're exposed to all of your newcomers uh, and your current because you have individuals who have to meet uh, certain benchmarks or certain licensure levels before they're able to actually even take a promotion exam. 
And so you get a chance to see that, uh, uh, some of the numbers that we talked about. You can see the actual demographics in real, uh, real time. But in those roles, you, it's a lot of coaching. Uh, it's a lot of counseling. It's a lot of example setting. Um, it's a lot of helping to meet individuals where they are. Uh, I think we talked about it a couple of times, that multi-generational workforce, uh, with Chief Lee and I having 16 years on, we may be a generation and a half away from the individuals who are coming on now. So it, it's a challenge. Uh, moving into the chief role now, we're now kind of over those lieutenants who will be the people who are uh, interacting for the most part with uh, individuals beneath them, the paramedics or the AMTs or EMTs. But I do push in, in my area professional development. Um, it, I'm very big on professional development and customer service. So those are some of the things that I'm definitely pushing to my individuals so that they can not look at me and say, hey, you're superb. They can look at themselves and say, I can be just as superb with Mr. Superb's help. So. And, and Lee, I, I, I know a story about you as a young rookie. <laughs> I I, I've bet. heard, I've heard there was a story when you first, I don't, maybe in your first week out of the academy, so, or, or you, you came head first out of a burning building from the, from the second floor. All of that is true. Yeah, I, did. I remember that. Um, How do you remember that? I remember it because I was there. <laughs> I was there and you scared the bejesus out of me. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it, was, it was one of those moments. Uh, uh, me as a chief, I remember every, I don't remember the close, as many of the close calls that involved me personally, but as a chief, I remember every call where it could have went really bad. Those stick with you as, as a chief. So, uh, and you were surprised that I remember that, but I remember it vividly. Um, that's, you're now in that, you know, let's turn the page, what, many years later, 16 mm -hmm. years later, and now you're the chief that has that type of responsibility, and, uh, and then it's kind of come full circle for us. So what does that feel like, knowing, having that experience as a very young uh, person on the job, and how that, might shape part of your experiences as a chief now? Oh, that, that's big. Um, you reminded me of that moment that I, a lot of people didn't know I came out head first of that. Mm -hmm. But that It was pretty impressive by the way. <laughs> 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 well, that shows as a chief that you have to be uh, situationally aware at all times. You have to be thinking about the big, bigger picture. You are responsible for a lot of people and your decision making is going to be critical because if you, hadn't, if you hadn't thought at that moment to make that decision, I probably wouldn't be sitting here today. We'll probably have a different outcome. So as a chief officer, uh, you just don't develop that once you put on a chief shirt or bugles. Throughout your career, you have established that leadership style and, and known that you, you have to make critical decisions. As something that Chief Robinson said, you know, he, he immediately started recognizing once he got into uh, the EMS training role, started meeting people where they are. Well, my journey is a little bit different. As soon as I got promoted, I kind of been thrusted, you know, throughout the EMS Bureau and tasked with different things, and uh, one of them being COVID. And you quickly learn that you have to be a decision maker. You have to think outside the box. You have to see the bigger picture. You have to make tough decisions. You have to lead people where, you know, they don't really see the the picture. And so, to your point, it's 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 a tough role. We're newly promoted. We're learning a lot, but we didn't we didn't get in these roles just by, you know, by chance. We learn things along the way and little nuggets. So thank you for saving my life too. Well, yeah, yeah. Thank you for listening to me and coming on out, out, of, that, uh, out of that window. Um, well, it's just been a pleasure uh, knowing both of you, uh, just seeing your growth, uh, being uh, just a part of the journey. This is not the end of this journey for you. This is really just the beginning of the next chapter of your career. I'm really looking forward to uh, big things out of you. And um, I guess just for those young people that's been on the job a few years and they still have their certification processes to go through and they're looking for, just share a little bit about your thoughts about helping them, like what do you give advice to them like to be successful? Maybe not to become battalion, but just to be a really good paramedic. I think both of y'all have heard me say, 
And, like, and it, it really is this simple. To be the paramedic, you would want to show up at your house for one of your loved ones. And I think that should be the level that all of us should try to get to, is be the person, be the firefighter, be the paramedic that you would want to show up at your house to take care of one of your loved ones. So what advice do you give them about uh, studying, getting their certifications, and, and, and the opportunities that, that are out there for them? Uh, my advice would be to, uh, as we talked about, do the work, uh, study hard. Um, there is light at the end of the tunnel. It's going to mm -hmm. seem like a long time, but again, that, that pressure is going to build that diamond that you could be. Uh, reach out for help. Know what your resources are and don't be afraid to utilize those resources because those resources are there for a reason. Um, it's, it's not an easy road, but it is a possible one. So, um, uh, and then once you do obtain your licensure, just know that, you know, good customer service. And as you mentioned, being the paramedic that would take care, that you would want to take care of your family members. So I would say to that, be the change that you wish to see. Okay. Uh, I would uh, piggyback and say the same thing. Uh, pretty much, if you, you got to stay focused. We know coming in the door, you're tasked with so many different things that you have to meet. Don't look at everything as a deadline. Just take your time, set some goals. Uh, the, the way we got here is literally pen and paper, put it on paper, like set yourself some goals, set yourself up for success. Along the way, will you have stumbles? Absolutely. I had them. Nobody here hasn't had them. And in order to get where you want to be, if you put in that work, I promise you it's going to yield you the results that you, you will want. And uh, we're here as resources, but there's so many other people that not only not look like us, that may not look like you, that can be a resource for you. So don't turn down any help, you know, and, and just, just stay focused. That's, that's the easiest way that I can explain it to you. Yeah, because it truly is a brotherhood, sisterhood. We, uh, the fire department, you know, we talk about, we are a big family. Uh, we all share that same end game is to provide the right emergency response promptly and accurately every day, right? So we all share that. That is what we're here for. That's our purpose. And uh, I think people, positive people and role models like you uh, is gonna continue to shape our fire department into the future.